Who who did that? Who uh, published that one? Is it super rare or is it? Uh, no, I don't think it. Eh, or who was that? I should know. I bought something. it too. Maybe it was strictly limited or special reserve games. Okay. So I was trying to think. I was like, if it's Devolver, they probably did one of the bigger ones. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I was on Amazon, like not the quite as deluxe version, but I was like 30 bucks. I was like, I don't want to miss. I'm going to be mad if I because I, I are you familiar with this game, John? Vaguely. Demon Throttle. It's like it's made by the people who made Gato Roboto. Yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. apparently only going to be physically physical. released, like never come out digitally, which is kind of I was like, oh, I'm not buying it. That's sort it's of kind of bullshit. And then, yes. Yeah. And then they announced the second one and I was like, oh, I can't miss it. <laughs> I got to get wait. It they announced a, a second re- a second game or second release. Second second wave of. Them. OK, like, I was going like to say that I miss a second game that they're also doing that way because God damn it. Hey everybody, welcome to Pursuing Pixels. My name is Kevin Portelli and I'm here tonight with John Hines. Hey there. And Randall Nolary. Hey folks. And we are back as always to talk about some video games, although I am in Michigan for the first at least proper episode. I did record a uh, Save It for the Cast intro the other day yeah, briefly, but this is the first episode that we are, uh, or at least that I'm recording from uh, back home here in Michigan. Uh even later than usual, just moving one time zone over. I was like, I took a shower earlier before we recorded. I was like, I got to wake up, man. I had a couple beers while I was watching TV with my mom and sister. And I was like, man, it's like, I got to wait for 10 o'clock to get started. This is crazy. And then we talked for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but it's perfect. It's been good to catch up because it's been a little while since we've uh, gotten the crew together, both yeah. me, you know, moving and whatnot. And everyone's been super busy just in general. So we kind of bulked up with some of our recordings and just kind of said, OK, cool. We got a little bit of a cushion for the next few weeks. So it's been about a month since we've all sat down and uh, chatted some video games and whatnot. And I uh, I feel like it's been a little while. I've been sitting on this one for a few episodes. I'm like, OK, we talking on pot. We talking Pocking Rocky Reshrine this episode or next episode. But I didn't want to dig in because especially... Uh, Randall and I feel like have a pretty, I guess not long history, but just we both have played the original Pocky and Rocky game together oh, uh, yeah. co-op on the uh, Super Nintendo. And did I actually we beat did a pretty, that? I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah, because that was one of like the like on Lost Vikings status yeah. in my brain of like, oh, man, that was like a really hard game. Like, oh, I yeah. remember just because it's like when you see it at first glance, both. You know, Pocky and Rocky reshrined in every game in the series, even Pocky and Rocky and Becky on the Game Boy yeah. Advance. Yeah. Like, you see those games and they have like a really cutesy, like chibi, yeah. like Japanese folklore art style. And like yeah. you just see everything looks really cute and fun and charming. And you're yeah. Like, first stage right off the bat, whether it's <laughs> reshrined or the original games, you are getting your ass kicked. I <laughs> no feel, doubt like, about pretty, it. Pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Like they're not easy games. They are like. I wouldn't call them bullet hell shoot 'em ups because they're more like uh, they're cute 'em ups, kind of ground based. Yeah, cute 'em ups, but they're ground based where you're like running around on the ground. And I've been actually really impressed with like how different all the games are in the series because yeah. I actually did a stream maybe uh, probably a few months ago now, but I did a stream where I was just playing some random retro games. I ended up playing Pocky and Rocky two for quite a while, Ooh. which I had never played up to that point. Ooh. And it actually plays very differently than Pocky and Rocky Ooh. one and reshrined. You actually like, at least in single player mode, you play as Pocky, the kind of main protagonist. And then Rocky is actually like your sidekick off to the side. I don't know how it works if oh. you play two players, but like you can actually like use your side character and like chuck them at enemies and like love it almost as like a, like shield not a shield but like a ranged projectile like yeah, a secondary yeah. weapon like almost like an enemy clear like it, right. it, it worked very differently and then on pocky and rocky reshrined which we're going to kind of mostly talk about i guess we're going to talk about the whole series Let's though but like it. like pocky and rocky the first game when randall and i played co-op i was pocky and he was rocky or maybe yeah. vice versa but we just kind of plowed through the whole game co-op that way pocky and rocky reshrined i don't know how far you've made it i've probably played about an hour and a half or so maybe through the first four or five stages i beat it and oh you beat the game <laughs> okay okay I beat you, game. I didn't expect you didn't expect you to <laughs> lap me as i've been uh dilly dallying over i mean here, but uh, you get infinite continues and they're they're very generous not super generous but they are it's, relatively it's still very generous. hard for sure like yeah. i still felt like i was chipping away at even in up to stage four or five or whatever i still yeah. felt like i was like okay, I'm getting a game over. I got to figure out like the best way to beat this stage or just get a little better. But I really yes. like how like at least uh, the what I've played so far, they've just kind of like thrown a, like each stage you play as a new character yes. essentially. And like maybe not 
one to one, but it definitely kind of shuffles up the gameplay quite a bit. Like not that they have totally different abilities. They all have like the general same move set, but at the same time, it does keep things nice and fresh and it keeps it things. I don't know. It just felt like a really fun adventure from yes. what I'd played so far. Although I did read that. I think you have to unlock co-op in this, uh, reshrined version. I'm not sure, but I thought you had to like beat the game to unlock uh, couch co-op. I thought I read that somewhere. Interesting. But I guess you you might know better than me, but maybe not. It no. sounds like you played this mostly solo. Yeah, I played this solo, and uh, this was another one that I broke out the uh, the Switch arcade stick for about halfway Ooh. through, and I was like, nice. oh, okay, now I feel comfortable plowing yeah. through the rest of this. Like that made yeah. a big difference for me because it does. It just feels like an arcade game, and you can thankfully you don't have to push the button every single time to attack. You can hold it down right. Yes. And, you know, you kind of have the part of the reason why you get your (laughs) ass kicked at the beginning of these sort of games is the control scheme is a little bit more complex than you might immediately assume because you've got you kind of got your main projectile button um, and you can get different projectile upgrades through the level like you do in a lot of shmups and they, you know, you'll have like a spread type of weapon uh, or like a fire weapon that's a little bit more like uh, concentrated, right? And as you get more of those, it upgrades like a lot of uh, classic shmups do. Um, kind of like Gradius style, yeah, yes. like multiple tiers of each weapon. Yes, or a lot of the compile shooters are that way too, where yeah, if you get the yeah. same um, upgrade, it starts stacking on it and you get more powerful. Yeah. And But then you get hit, you become less powerful, but it does give you the opportunity to recollect your power up a la like Rings and Sonic, I guess, to some extent. That yeah, way. yeah. Um, which is cool. Um, but yeah, all that to say, there's the attack button, and then just as crucially... There's this, um, if you're playing as Pocky, there's the fan button. And the fan is basically like protect your character, Ooh. protect your character and kind of also shoot back the projectiles at the enemies that they're shooting at you. Like, it's just like, it's almost I like almost a parry. I almost forgot about that. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like a melee parry. Yes. yes. Although I don't think you can actually like melee enemies. Yeah, it's mostly just to like can. swipe projectiles out of the way or yeah. swipe them back. But maybe, yeah, maybe you can just swipe you can, them. You never you get close enough to them. Yeah, you don't want to necessarily be that close, but I think you yeah. can do damage that way too um if you wanted to just power through that way but you're going to take a lot of damage in the process (laughs) yeah you know but there's those and then there's kind of a um a slide move too which is super crucial to not get hit like you can move normally but then there's kind of a just the slide where you're covering about half the screen in your slide animation you even kind of like bank off the walls yeah. or off the sides of the screen and stuff and that's what's different about Pocky and Rocky 2 you instead of that slide you actually like throw your partner so maybe if you play co-op or if you play independent like when you're each controlling one character maybe you can do the dive but it's it's interesting how each game in the series has kind of plays a little bit differently it's pretty cool the throw your character thing that's got me thinking of like our type when you could like throw the orb out yeah it's very similar uh, yeah or uh dragon what's it called uh dragon blaze the psycho game yeah yeah it's very similar to that yeah where you like kind of launch your dragon out yeah it is very similar to that yeah it's like kind of like launching a a melee sort of projectile out there to kind of like block some attacks or like you can kind of like if I recall correctly it's been a while but I think like when you did the throw it would kind of like bump the enemies out of the way yeah so you could like throw it at a boss and kind of like hit them further back on the screen a little bit I can't remember a hundred percent for sure but I want to play that very similarly to that dive yeah and it's just as good yeah as every other game in the series I think I'll I'll at least tip my hand I really really love this franchise and that like reshrine definitely did not disappoint those those cartridge releases cost a gajillion dollars so you know yes I picked up Pocky and Rocky the original at uh Flipside Records over uh well I was gonna say over back in Michigan but now that I'm back here (laughs) uh right around the corner I should go back and check because I picked up I think Super Metroid I got a lot of my Super Nintendo games over there for a reasonable price a lot of my long before they launched up yeah Turbo Graphics they always have a good selection of Mm -hmm. not to mention a good uh record and they always have like old retro action figures and stuff yeah cool yeah they did yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really loved Reshrined. And one of the reasons I was mm-hmm. kind of like itching to talk about it too is because I know I talked about Ninja Saviors on the podcast after oh, Randall yeah. had talked about it in the past. But it's a game that uh, 
they've put out now a trio. I think it's In In Studios or In In Games. I forget what they're. It's I N I N. Yeah. Uh, but they've done a bunch of these remakes, or I guess three of them now. Yep. Where they essentially like because this does Pocky and Rocky Reshrined really does sort of feel like a remake of the first game, yes. but a, like a reimagining because yes. all the levels feel like like at first I was like oh this might be just a remake and then I was like oh wait no this stage is like almost twice as long yes with and there's new like a stuff. mini boss and mm-hmm. like new little like cut not cut scenes but like little kind of like Kirby Pac-Man esque cut scenes like yep. in between like kind of leading into the next half of the stage or whatever I was just really really impressed and again it does that awesome like squared pixel visual like when you're behind an obstacle yeah. and you can kind of see through it it does that awesome like dual layer of pixels i don't know how to explain there's it some exactly, like super nintendo so cool. callbacks and a lot of the like visual design and flair that way but it's in widescreen now like the game plays yeah. in widescreen which it's uh, a like, gorgeous really game. feels nice yeah it looks great i love the pixel art and it just yeah just harkens back to that era but in widescreen which yeah exactly like ninja saviors that way Although I yeah, you know, and wild guns too, and which wild I, I don't guns. think I called that out because that's probably my favorite of the three games if I had to pick one of the three. Mm-hmm. But I, I truly love all it. I, it's hard to pick between it's them Ninja Saviors really for me. Them all. But yeah, it's I, yeah, I, I not a, not all. a huge surprise with yeah. that that yeah. wrestling combat. We talked about it before. But yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're all fantastic. It's, it's honestly a toss up. And I love that they all have couch co-op. But this yes. this is like the way to do a retro yes. rebirth or remake. It's Agreed. like a true reimagining with new stages, new mm-hmm. characters added. But like a lot of the core say it's like. You know, just like with Sonic Mania. Again, mm-hmm. I don't love Sonic games, but everybody that does, I feel like is like, yes, this is everything I th- remember loving about Sonic games, but done in Modernized. a modern sense. You know, yes. and this is exactly what these games feel like. It's just like, but they feel like a little, almost a little more true to the retro. Agreed. Uh, sense than than Sonic Mania did. Yes. Now, although that that felt pretty true to those games as well. So no, but it's true. Slate on Sonic. <laughs> But yeah, no, I think all so... these in-in games were. It just feels like they just took, you know, those Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis era concepts and made them widescreen and added more stuff and new characters. And was like, here you go. And like, oh, it's awesome. A- Thank you. You know what? It's, it's almost like they took the Super Nintendo games that like should have been arcade games and actually like made arcade versions of them. Yeah. But yeah, in like HD widescreen. But like they have more. I think these were arcade games as well. Some of them at least. But like. Uh, like wild guns or whatever, but maybe mm-hmm. I'm just mixing that up with sunset riders. Mm-hmm. But I feel like uh, they just really like, yeah, nail that arcadey energy and that couch co-op. And again, yeah, yes. just adding that new, the new stages and all that stuff just really makes you feel like, okay, cool. This is giving me like the memories, but at the same time gives me a, de- like I was immediately, as soon as I bought Pocky and Rocky Reshrine, that was when I was like, and played a, like the first stage or two. I was yeah. like, okay, I got to order Ninja Saviors. Oh they, Yeah. Need Both all this three and of Wild those. Guns are so yeah. good. I got to get this one, and I'm really pumped. I think they also are working on that Ninja Jaja Maru oh, game as well. In that that's cool. I that's think nice. like I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, I the way I found out about it was I think through their Twitter or through their website. So I think they're making like some sort of remake. It looks like kind of on a different scale because it looks like that one's on Steam. Oh, as you're right. Wild they Guns. Are. Yeah. It looks like Pocky and Rocky Reshrined and Ninja Saviors are only on Switch, at least for the time being. So. Oh, and they're um, involved in that Raystorm uh, HD collection, which is that's uh, Galactic Attack, the Saturn game that I really like that has ooh. the two separate like main shooting perspective. And then you can also like shoot down onto like what is the ground essentially. And there's like so it's like two separate areas that you're fighting um so I'm yeah excited about that too yeah that's awesome. cool and yeah it's it's just cool to play these Pocky and rocky games like again just being like a ground-based shoot 'em up like you just don't yeah. see too many of those no. and like again having to utilize the movement so much like whether you're diving around or deflecting projectiles like you're just all over the place i really think this series is like uh i guess it's well known in like the retro collecting scene but beyond that i don't think it's particularly well known and i think they're no just some of the best games on super nintendo I mean, the last game came out 20 plus years ago on Game Boy Advance. So, yeah. And that was yeah. not very well known at that point. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely all for uh, in in uh, continuing whatever they're up to. And yes. <laughs> just like, you know, giving new life to these old games, uh, classics yes. that classics that a lot of people never knew, including me. So, right. Um, do. I don't know anything else to add to the Pocky and Rocky stuff, Randall, before we uh, toss it over to John. No, not a ton. Just I was like appreciative that they added those new characters, too, because they do feel a little bit different. So, yeah, just yeah. how how many new characters were there? Because I, I got to I, in what I had played, I got to, I think, a third like Pocky, Rocky and then a third character. And I think it felt like there were going to be more, but I, I didn't 
you know, I couldn't tell. Yeah, I think there's five total. So I guess maybe okay. three I knew, and depending on how many you could actually unlock in those original games. Um, but yeah, they, yeah. they feel different enough too, as you were saying, they feel distinct. So I just yeah, each stage that. kind of designed around that character. And again, mm-hmm. the stages are nice and beefy too. Like Big a lot time. of times with shoot 'em ups, like it's like eight short and sweet stages. It's like, this is not the case with this game. And it's got that great, like Castlevania ghosts and goblin style map between yes. stages where it's yes. like, I just love, I, it's just nails every element of, the retro and the modern. I don't know. They, and they give you it. checkpoints so they don't. Yes. Very generous. Start at the beginning too. every single time, which is yes. a reason why I beat it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very, very impressive. How many stages, by the way? Oh, God. You're going to ask me Roughly. that now. It's been like two weeks, man. Roughly 10, 12, <laughs> 8. Is it like the classic 8? Or did it feel like, oh, man, there's more here? Uh, some amount of stages, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So I, I guess I'm about halfway done. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, why don't we uh, toss the ball over to uh, John here to talk some uh, Cozy Grove, which we talked about probably over a year ago. I think we were trying to uh, figure out exactly with our uh, pal Megan Carnes, who was on the podcast uh, in the past. But yeah, I think, John, you just started digging into that. Mm-hmm. She was on episode 107, which was the first time we talked about it. But nice. uh, I had picked it up. Not even I think it may have been on sale. Maybe it hadn't been. And I just was felt compelled to buy it and it had always been one that you know my friends had been playing like uh i'd always see it like pop up at like as i playing on the switch and i just be like oh someone else is playing cozy grove i should really give that game a shot Mm -hmm. and it finally just reached a breaking point and i picked it up and i had always been sold on it as it being kind of like a spooky uh like charming animal crossing like sure And it absolutely is that. Nothing wrong with that. (laughs) At the same time, I think it also really scratched the same itch that Forager did for me. Mm. But in in a different way that like Forager, you know, you could just endlessly play that game and like there was nothing like keeping you from it. Like I think that Cozy Grove, as like Megan brought up on the original episode, like there is kind of a limit per what you can do each day. And I really appreciate when you like, you've played playing the game for like 30 minutes and the game's like, like you've pretty much done everything there is to do today. Like you can keep playing (laughs) if you want, but like everything will respawn tomorrow. And yeah, honestly, that was the biggest like selling point for refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, God, this is nice where like the game is just explicitly telling me is like, you're done. Like log off. Do you've something had your else. fun. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you've, you've even mentioned that with like Genshin and stuff before. Like it's kind of nice to just like have that like, OK, that's, I've done everything I can do for the day. Nothing a little else check in. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's nice to like not have something like because, yeah, comparing it to like Stardew Valley is just something that I could just keep doing for hours and hours on end. Where right. like this game like explicitly is like, hey, you're good. You, you've done you've talked to all the nice bear ghosts and you're having a nice time. But like the gameplay loop that like really made me feel like the comparison to Forager was pretty accurate is that everything you do furthers another thing. So if you okay. are getting more ore, you're building more uh, furniture and that is giving you more money and then that money is lets you buy more trees which then gives you more like every single item leads to another item so nice. you're always constantly like advancing at least one area and by doing something in that area you're also advancing other areas whereas like forager was this really frenetic paste of like all right i've set up like like the things to do things as fast as possible and i'm just generating so much of every resource like so quickly now whereas this one's like yeah i'm just relaxing and like talking to these bears and like having a real nice time and you know what the game tells me that i've had enough and it's good <laughs> like, yeah that do, that does sound nice because my brain definitely went into like min max mode when i was playing yeah. forager just like okay how can i make these faster how can i make these more efficiently and just like that's all i thought about and didn't even go into the dungeons half the time right and like that that's the idea of forager is just to be as efficient as possible and yeah. like this one is just to chill and have a nice time 
Uh, Wonderful. Which I, uh, it, it's been really enjoyable and I've been playing it pretty much daily for, I think three weeks now. Nice. And like, it's still like the other nice thing is that it keep, when you first play it, you're on a very small Island and you're doing only a few things. And then as like, because the whole thing, the point of the game is you're a spirit scout and you're trying to like, help these bear ghosts like finish their unfinished business or help them figure out what they need to like pass on and like the so the island itself is kind of like changing and it grows over time so like the first time that you go on there there's only you know a few bears and then the island actually grows and gets bigger and so like the first couple times you're not overwhelmed with the size of it sure. whereas the later yeah. on you're like oh there's more places to explore and i'll just branch out from there so just a nice pleasant game tons of fun i highly recommend it <laughs> oh i guess the one caveat i has is that like the game does have some bugs in it or just like menus where like items will be selected after you've moved on or like the, but they are so like nitpicky that I'm like, I, I encounter them and I'm like, yeah, that's probably not supposed to happen. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. So like, it <laughs> not game breaking. <laughs> right. It doesn't yeah, yeah. impact the game at all. And I'm like, I'm not like losing progress or something like that or right. So like, I could totally see like someone being like, Oh, like, I can't believe they would release a game in this state. I was like, it's fine. Who cares? It's, yeah, it happens. Yeah, it's a it's lovely on every other respect. Like, it's got a great soundtrack, looks great, like handles great. What more do you want? Yeah, and it seems perfect. I know we say this about like half the games we talk about, but like perfect on Switch, just like fired mm-hmm. up for yep. quick sessions here and there or handheld while you're watching TV or whatever. Like, it just seems sounds perfect for that kind of situation. Mm hmm cute and spooky is a good aesthetic too so it's yeah. great oh yeah i love it yeah yeah real good well uh well not quite a uh, spooky but definitely cute i've been uh playing a bunch of uh link between worlds lately uh legend of zelda that is and this nice. is my first time playing this game i know i've mentioned it briefly on uh save it for the cast episodes in the past but like i've finally kind of been digging into it proper over the last few days like i started it up on one of my trips when I was like lugging some of my stuff back home to Michigan. And then like now that I've been kind of getting settled, I've been playing mostly I've done a couple of streams. I haven't been doing a ton of gaming, honestly, but I've been playing like done a couple live streams on my PC. And then otherwise I've been kind of I actually went to play some Panzer Paladin today that uh, we were like thinking about maybe talking about that on the podcast. And my switch was dead somehow. Hmm. Like, I guess I had it on sleep mode, but I haven't touched it since I've been home and it just drained the battery without uh, using it. But I guess, yeah, if it's on sleep mode. Uh, but mm-hmm. my 3DS haven't charged it and got since God knows when, but it was still uh, had a full uh, juicy battery in there. So, yeah, I was like, I guess I'll pick up where I left off on uh, Link Between Worlds. I basically had just played, I think, when I talked about it on Saver for the Cast, like I pretty much just got through like the opening sequence of the game, like maybe like a small initial dungeon or whatever. But like now I actually played like. About an hour earlier today and then about an hour before we started recording the podcast and I, like right at the spot I was at, I was just thinking like, oh, man, I'm kind of stuck. Like I was almost thinking like because I know like in the game, like you can like every time you die, you can like then re-rent your items at the start from uh, I forget the character's name, Rovia or something like that. Ravi, uh, I think. That, Ravi, yeah, Ravia. Um, that uh, purple bunny character reminds me a lot of Nabbit from uh, the new Super Mario Brothers games. I don't know if there's an inspiration there at all or some kind of crossover. That That's is the first interesting. time I've thought about Nabbit in uh, several years. <laughs> I like that character for whatever. I don't think I ever played as Nabbit, but a cool character like design anyways. But uh, but yeah, very uh, reminiscent of that. But yeah, I was kind of thinking like I was like, I wonder if I have to like die to like trigger a cutscene to like because I kept felt like I kept feeling like I was exploring and like almost hitting a dead end, especially because once I got the ability to like turn two dimensional and morph into the wall and start exploring around, it's like, I was really surprised how open ended that is. I mean, they definitely have stuff that you start to learn the language of the game, the visual language that is, and like, see like, okay, here's a little slit in the wall. I can definitely sneak through there. Here's a little like darker layer of bold boulders right there. So I know I can't like sneak right through there. I know it's going to stop me there, but like, it's pretty impressive, like how freely you can just kind of like pop into the wall at any given time, especially given that this is like virtually the same map 
yep. from Link to the Past, which I've played. I think I've talked about this on the podcast, too, but I've played like basically up to the point where you start switching between the light and dark world and you turn into a bunny. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on in this game? <laughs> like, I really I just always get stuck in Zelda games. And I was really worried, actually, before I played like the hour that I played uh, right before we started recording tonight. I was kind of feeling like I got stuck. Like I was actually just about to like, oh, I guess I'm just going to like die on purpose and like see if it like triggers something. But I, I explored a little more, found the miner, and then I, I forgot what they even had, but they had something that I needed. And then I ended up going back to my house and like the Ravia character, or the Nabbit character just decides to like move in all of a sudden. And OK, now I can get the items I need. And like I'm totally through the first dungeon. The first dungeon was really, really clever. Nice. I still don't know how people... I know a lot of people who play on the 3DS and say they turn the 3D all the way off. And there's certain games where I'm like, I I know you can see it sort of. But really, when you turn that 3D on, they really make use of like being able to see the different like floors of the dungeons a lot of times. Yeah. And you really have to kind of like like it's kind of hard to see like exits and entrances if you don't have that 3D cranked all the way up. Personally, I love the 3D effect, so it really doesn't bother me. It's a little bit annoying with the new 3DS how it has that like eye sensor. Oh, I so, think like, that makes it, it better though, to it, be honest. It with does you. make it way better, but like it you have to stay kind of stillish. Like yeah, I I, right. I had a tr- like when I was playing this morning earlier today, um I had like a glare or something in the room that I could tell like I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm in a position where like it's kind of messing with the the sensor situation but when i was playing this evening i was like oh this is like smooth as butter not a single hiccup but it just really just like i said on the save it for the cast episode too it's like it's such a quick paced zelda game like especially for the top down games like they feel so almost like sluggish a lot of times when i play them like they they just start to feel tedious especially once you start to make progress at least for me where i'm like oh okay i died and i gotta redo that again or i gotta even if I just like kind of lost, just like covering ground takes a lot of time. But in this game, Link just moves so quickly hmm. and the map is like pretty condensed for the most part. You really just can kind of get from any like I feel like I've explored anywhere that I can get to on the map uh, at, at the moment with the abilities I have uh, multiple times. Like I've just been running around and I've only played three or four hours. I'm still getting the nonstop warnings of like, hey, you've been playing for a while. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you should take a break. Uh, and yeah, I don't think I've played for more than four or five hours and I've gotten at least four or five of those uh, messages or whatever. But I just I'm really lo- loving the sense of humor is really like light and witty. Like whenever you call like your little like witch helper to like take you to the different. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Weather veins or whatever. Like she always has something snarky to say, like I was supposed to help something green. And she's like, and I wasn't going to go around mowing all the grass in Hyrule. So, <laughs> and then I saw you and I, and then I'm thinking like, oh man, they're making fun of like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting here chopping down every last blade of grass looking for rupees. Yeah, get it's those just, rupees. it's just such a charming game. I'm really loving like the 2d, like morphing into the wall, like almost like paper Mario style or something yeah. like mm. just feels like, it, yeah, it feels kind of reminiscent of that mechanic in super paper Mario, yeah. but a little more fully realized in the sense that like, it's very, at least what I've explored so far, both in the dungeons and in the overworld, or at least in the first dungeon and in the overworld, it's like really impressive how you can explore. And again, I'm, I'm only kind of lightly familiar with the map from Link to the Past, but but I'm easily I'm like, oh, yep, here's the Lost Woods. Oh, here's where you find this. Here's where you find that. It's just so cool how they basically made a new game on top of an old game. And it feels I, as someone who doesn't have Link to the Past beaten into my brain, it feels very, very fresh. Um, and it honestly is probably it, probably my favorite top down 2D Zelda game that Ooh. I've played so far based on the little bit I've played. That's not saying much because I definitely gravitate more towards, uh, I guess, Breath of the Wild in recent memory, yeah. but like Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time yep. and stuff and even Majora's Mask. But I, I do really like the 2D Zelda games and, and all of them, but I just tend to never finish them. But this is one that I'm like. Hoping, especially now that I'm kind of just like getting settled in back at home, I've mentioned like it's kind of fun to just kind of lean into the handhelds for the mm-hmm. time being. So, yeah, I've been enjoying uh, playing this game so far. I'm really, really loving it. And I'm loving that like every time I feel like I'm stuck, it's like it feels a little more focused and more concise that I can kind of make. Even if I'm wrong, like a wrong guess doesn't take too much time, I guess. I don't feel like I'm like playing for an hour and then going, I made zero progress time to move on i can just kind of like warp between the weather veins like it's just i don't know it's whether it's a quality of life stuff or whatever but i am just really loving it so far 
I was really hoping that you had gotten farther farther into the game because I was like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to bring up these things because I don't want to like spoil you on them. I want you. I, to I personally them on your don't own. mind. I don't want to. I don't uh, want to speak for anybody else. But no, no, it's fine. I, I'll I'll forget because I'm gonna try to play Link to the Past first. So it's gonna be a long time. So go. Oh for my it. god, you guys are breaking my heart. I'm the, <laughs> Just I'm, I'm gonna keep play it, those keep games. Keep it mild. Keep it mild on this. I will. Ugh. I, I was never one of the, and it never was one of my favorites, but like I, I definitely played a ton of Link to the Past. Like I first played it on Game Boy Advance because that's nice. how I played every Super Nintendo. I didn't own a Super Nintendo, but I played first all version of-, of Four Swords on that version. <laughs> yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Indeed. cool game. Yeah, yeah. cool game. It was great, but yeah, oh, man, I, I played a ton of Link to the Past and got that baked into my brain, but only like. I, I still prefer to the 3D Zeldas after, you know, I played that and I yeah. was never one of those people who thought like Link to the Past was the best Zelda. And I still don't think that, but no. I I really loved having Link to the Past as the basis for Link Between Worlds because like it real like you said, like they did basically just build another game on top of an old game, but they made it so incredibly its own thing like in a way yeah. that was really really impressive and like i i really want you to get to the later parts in the game because i think that the way that link between worlds handle like when everybody was talking about how breath of the wild was like oh you can go in any direction in mm-hmm. any yeah. at any point and i'm like i kind of prefer how link between worlds did it because it oh, did boy. the same thing but like it 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 did. I kind of have tears in the same way that like Link to the Past did, where it's like, okay, you have to beat these. Like, uh, it was the formula. It set up the formula that was used in a lot of later Zeldas, where it's like, okay, you have these three dungeons and then you have these seven dungeons yeah where... and each one's kind of based around an item right. like, yeah the 3d games really kind of borrowed off that formula for sure yeah and then like link between worlds was like all right we're gonna give you the items before you get to the dungeons and you can buy them and do it in any order that you want or if you're like me, That's you can cool. grind for rupees and buy <laughs> all of the items before you go into any dungeons and see what you can do with all of the items in, Absolutely. The, in the dungeons that they weren't even designed for. And yeah. Like, they, yeah. of course, like because it's a, a Zelda game, of course they figured out that you would do that. And they oh, built man. all those dungeons around using, like, yes, there are the like set solutions that you have. That for, are like, like, the main path. Right. That, like, it's like, okay, this is the item that corresponds to this dungeon. But it's like, but what if you try this? And they're like, yep, that we accounted for that. And it's, inc- like, it's such an incredibly, like, designed game. Wait, wasn't this the one where they, it was the concept of renting the weapons? Am yes. I remembering yep. that correctly? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I don't man. know if anything changes after you die or if things, like, go up if you rent them multiple times or whatever. But as of right now, it seemed like everything was, like, 20 rupees to rent it, at least at the I, when I, my first time in the shop, it's uh, which is just rent, right in your you house. you lose everything if you die. And Interesting. So, but you can buy, but it's a lot more expensive. And, uh-huh. like, it will... Oh, okay. I haven't had the option to buy yet. That's cool. Yeah. And, like, that, then they will also... That's, that's how they kind of... I have like whatever the main path is is like well we've heavily discounted the buy price on this item if you want to go that one I was like screw you I'm going to pay full price <laughs> full yeah. sticker price for the hook shot in do. the first dungeon can't stop me <laughs> yeah no it's it's really a lot of fun to like and it, and it's just so cool like all the little detail like I love like it, it's very reminiscent like you can tell they were definitely inspired by this game and the art design um or the visual design or whatever with uh, the remake of Link's Awakening. Like it has yeah. that kind of toy box kind of look, but like mm-hmm. I really love the little details. Like when Link's like running and if there's like a crow up in a tree, mm-hmm. like Link will like literally turn his head as you're running by oh, and like kind cool. of like turn up and look at it as you run past. And it's like, it's the quality of life stuff, even in just like how the old top down Zelda games feel very grid based where it's just up yeah. down left, right. You can't really attack on a diagonal. Like here you can like, if you're holding down your bow and arrow, like on a 45 degree angle, you can like move around however you see fit and then release when you want to shoot the arrow. So you can really kind of like 
and say, you know, you can run and 360 degree movement, same thing with your sword. And you just, everything just feels so quicker and so snappier. And so, I don't know. Just, I just really love it. It's all the throwback music is done so well. It's, it is mostly uh. throwback. So I guess that's like really the only kind of complaint is like, okay, you're not getting a lot of new stuff here. It is a lot of like nostalgia uh, other than uh, I do feel like the gameplay is very fresh, but like the presentation and like the, they're kind of tugging on those nostalgia strings pretty hard, but in a, in an awesome way, but it, that's like the only thing, like it would be cool to hear some new tunes, but at the same time, every time I hear a new, like a fresh rendition of the classics, it's like, Oh, I love that. Like when I go inside and you just said, beep, 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 beep. Oh, like yeah, you man. get to those classic tunes. It's like, huh. I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't shot. want it any other way as much as I'm like, Oh, I kind of wish there were new tunes. I don't know. It's a, that's my, my one little gripe. And then I guess like, because I knew you could go in and rent the stuff from the start, I kept thinking I was like missing something because you do have to like kind of play through this opening sequence before that rental situation gets triggered. So I kept thinking like, do I need to die or something before I trigger that rental situation or what? But yeah, thankfully I just had to like make a little bit more progress, I think. But even like the first boss battle with a uh, Yuga, which is like, I think like the main boss sort of, or at least mm-hmm. seemingly the main villain. And like right off the bat, you square off with them and it's like a pretty decently tough boss battle. I, I was able to beat it on my first try, but I was like, man, I'm running around pretty frantically. Uh, it's just kind of a cool, it's, it's, re- cool it's really cool, that. especially a Zelda game. Cause I feel like it's so yeah. often you, you have to wait like hours before yeah. the action kicks in. And this is like within the first half hour, hour, I'm like, getting into the getting into things quick so you're gonna make me replay this game and i'm not i'm not complaining but i have so many other (laughs) games i know i am sitting there thinking like how long is this game how 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 many dungeons are there but it's i'm really digging it so far i'm digging everything about it and you you have not played this at all randall no i bought it but that doesn't mean anything so yeah yeah, it's it's there play link Uh, to the past play link between worlds this is that's what i'm committed to i need to play through link to the past first it needs to happen i'm going to do that first and then i'm going to play this game i will do so well keep me posted on that front because i'll definitely try to sync up with you on that because i need an excuse to like either boot up the old save file and try to get over that hump or just but yeah maybe after play that would be kind of interesting to like to go backwards experience it yeah kind of yeah. backwards. like i do like I, again i was able to mostly like kind of recognize oh yeah here's where the you know the temple like i'm about to be at the temple of Hera. i think is like right where i'm about to enter mm-hmm. um but yeah i just i love the mini map the dual screen works fantastic oh, for it man. as well like it took me back to playing wind waker on wii oh, u and being so, like oh yeah yes, that dual screen amazing. is so nice oh it's incredible on Ugh. it's so nice just being able to swap items and just look just glance down at a map without pausing hell every yeah time. It's so nice i so miss nice. that so much yeah that that is huge that's that's a huge the upgrade to the zelda gameplay. franchise yeah yeah something no was doubt lost about it. along the way there <laughs> Yeah, oh, well. I'd be I'd st- I still would be curious to play uh, Breath of the Wild on the Wii U just to see what that yeah. feels like as opposed to playing it on Switch. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, but yeah, why don't we uh, toss it over to Randall and John, of course, will uh, chime in. I'm sure we all will. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, if Randall's been the back on his uh, basketball Zelda. bullshit these days. The yeah, <laughs> the classic <laughs> pursuing pixels uh, wrap up. <laughs> uh conversation but yeah we got to get the basketball stuff in and you've been on the 23 now right yes yes the 2k 23 uh yes. this is this is an unnecessary update to NBA gaming NBA in the future <laughs> baby because that's what i play uh that's my bullshit uh my life is still very busy and uh it's nice to like it's it's comforting because i've been playing it like i said since 2k 18 but then you know, it's also a little bit difficult in that kind of just like there's there's just a nice middle ground there. Right. Where it's like there's still enough challenge to keep me coming back. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm yeah. also familiar with it on a year by year basis. And, you know, but it's like, I don't know, it's there's so much depth to the gameplay where it's like. Now that I'm playing this my career mode where I'm just a single character yeah, you know, I I am me. I am MP is the nickname they they give to this character. They, they just refer to you as MP because they can't pronounce Randall Nolery or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> does MP stand for anything? Uh, is, I oh yeah, I think it does. It's like my player character, or like, or like my player or whatever. You know, it's something gotcha. like that. Yeah, MP. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah, because I'm playing just one character, I'm more focused on mechanics than overall, like, basketball plays and momentum, where before, like, I just knew run plays and find the open guy, and it was just yeah, like... get the ball to LeBron yeah. go, go, go. or whatever, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, play defense, and then we're just going to fast break, and, you know, that's how basketball is won. But when I'm just yeah. one character, I can't control every aspect of things, and I just have to be me, and then that let me lean into, you know, you know how this game is played and, like doing things like setting screens and stuff like that, that I was never doing yeah. in like team basketball. Um, being the person that was setting screens, not the person asking for the screen to be set with the ball in my hands, you know, right, stuff like right. that. You know? Can you choose like what position your player character is or is it like, it's Always. set by your like dimensions pretty much like okay. because I'm six foot nine with a seven foot four wingspan and in 2K23, <laughs> I'm a power forward and I can shoot three pointers, of course. OK, yeah. but, you know, because like I wonder, it's cool, though, like, that they don't like. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I wonder, like. Is the game kind of boring if you play as a center? <laughs> like, <are you> <laughs> no, I see when I play like regular 2K and I'm playing with the whole regular mode, team mode, I control every character. I typically take control of the center because it's easiest for me to impact the defense that way. Like right. I can like, protect I, I can the rim. That. I can, yeah. you know, move to double team or get a block and, a, you know, coming out the other side, you know, weak side block, those sort of things, or get the rebound. And you're not, like, easier. leaving someone wide open for three or something, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so that's typically the the control that I take if I'm controlling the whole team, but as one character, like, that really had me lean into, okay, no, I need to, like, really understand the mechanics of this game, and in the my career mode, the single player, it forces you to do, like, practice sometimes where you're working on individual skill sets of basketball but translated onto this controller where they literally use every single button for different things and uh, honestly multiple things uh, a lot of times <laughs> um, there's layers to the buttons if you're holding down r and doing this or l and doing this like you know it's like that you know there's that level yeah. of complexity where i'm still learning and understanding and you know now i'm trying to use the analog stick to shoot instead of you know holding a button down and releasing like there's is know, that like a flick and release kind yes. of shoot situation yes. so like kind of like skate style yes. mechanics for yes. lack of a better comparison yes that is a great comparison and yes okay very similar to like an analog control to something that's like very fluid right in the, the that's interesting shooting right and does yeah. like the flick like you need to like i i guess pull it back longer if you're further away or yes oh you hold God. it longer if you're further away and you can that's also kind of cool pull that's the left cool, trigger but, oh to do a fade away as you're doing that and that impacts <laughs> the type of shot you're doing right and how long you would hold it and things like that and it's just like very in the moment and you just kind of like you would if you were just outside shooting hoops you just kind of get used to how that feels over time and like become more successful and making baskets and you know you get the green over your head if you get a good shot release but all <laughs> yeah, that I was just say, saying i was like that's pretty cool but i was just thinking about how hard when i the couple games i think i just played like some practice shooting in yeah. nba 2k whatever one i got on switch i think it was 21 yeah i don't think i made a single basket so, <laughs> yeah. and that was just regular yeah. shooting so yeah i'm like man that add the flick stick into the equation it's got to be even tougher it is but i know tough. what you mean about getting the feel down it is, but I'm like, you know, I'm playing this every day. Let me like try it out the way that they're kind of pushing me to try it at this yeah. point, yeah. you know, type of thing. Like, I'm okay. I can learn new things. That's okay. That's fine. I can go out of my comfort zone on this to, and maybe I'll have a better level of control once I feel yeah. comfortable with what that is. But, you know, there's a learning curve. That's okay. Um, so, you know, I've been doing that, but I'm also playing the My Career with the story mode. I got into a little of that before, but there's like... <laughs> There's this um, main antagonist who, you know, he got drafted, yes. you know, one after you and you have a natural rivalry with this other guy, Shep. Oh, and, you're you know, still the number one pick. They can't even make you the number two pick. <laughs> no, I, well, I'm like the number 14 or 15 pick and he was oh. the number like 16 pick. Right. Just, right. It's like that. Yeah. OK, right. so he's got like a chip on his shoulder. Like, yes. oh, you think you're better than me? Yeah. Like he's like more naturally athletic, but I'm the, you know. You know, maybe mm. a little bit more team centric. I got a higher basketball IQ and I'm <laughs> grinding a little harder, you know, Jeez. you know, mm -hmm. it's all those it's all those uh, years since two, 2018 playing my career mode. You got it that is. basketball you know, IQ trained up. 
but this is the first time I'm actually playing my career because before I was playing my GM mode. Yeah. Oh, so that's right. That's I'm right. I do always mix up those bullshit. names. Yeah. So, uh, but Shep, it, it, you know, there'll be these like interstitials where like they have this fake like social media thing happening oh within the game and yeah. he's posting clips and talking shit about you. Um, but what I noticed recently, and it's hilarious, like he's got a tattoo where he's got his Shep logo and what it is, is like the middle school S. Do you guys know what this oh is? Oh my yes. God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the middle school S with a crown on top. And I'm, and yes, it's, it's never mind. I'm, back I'm like, in. that's fucking King. perfect. That's perfect. No, I King love Shep. this guy. I'm on Shep's team. I was thinking you were going to say it was like, I thought you were going to say it was something like he was like a shepherd, like herding the flock or something like that. His name's Shep, and he's got the middle school S with a crown on top. And I'm like, that's just absolutely perfect. You just nailed it. Like, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. And I didn't notice it for a while. And I saw that. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. That's, that's just too good. Especially because, you know, there's like some graphic designer on the team or something oh, yeah. that was like, oh, I'm this getting is this it. in there. Yeah. Well, check this out. Oh, <laughs> this that's is this so guy's funny. Brand. You know, and they've got all kinds of things later down the road that are just like superfluous things where like you do like fake rap battles and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, Shep's terrible at rapping and it's, there's all kinds of bullshit like that that are around the game. And you're like, I want to get back to basketball. But, yeah. Yeah. It, there's all that bullshit that you're thankfully I've I've kind of uh, grinded through most of that stuff and all like the Jake from State Farm bullshit that pops up. But, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm back to mostly just the basketball uh, and the daily, uh, you know, check in and play this match. But yeah, uh, MP's doing pretty well these days. Uh, it's it's still pretty good. And it's a good game of basketball, uh, especially on the new consoles. So I I. I'm enjoying it quite a bit uh, just from that perspective. The basketball feels excellent. I give them yeah, plenty of credit for that. That's good to hear, too, because, yeah, I feel like I just haven't played sports games in so long. And I, it actually kind of reminds me a little bit of like when my brother and my cousin uh, Mike and I, we would get together and we'd play like Madden on Nintendo 64. Yeah. Or maybe even on later systems. But oh, we yeah. would all play on the same team. Yeah. Or even or even if two of us were on the same team. So it was really fun to like be the receiver and actually oh, try yeah. to run the routes and like get open and stuff Especially like that. Especially the four so, player like, ones like that. That was dope. Yeah. Yeah. It just it really changes up the game when you do have to just play as like one player player on the team and try to contribute like it's sort of what i love about rocket league so much because it yes. makes you actually feel like a true contributor to the team yes in every single decision you make not just am i scoring or am i playing good defense it's like am i in good position at all times yes and um, I, and I feel the, like this kind of yeah you gotta like you gotta kind of know basketball a little bit you or do learn it if you don't so no you do like i played the online mode and that was like whoa like this is this is that and it does add to your overall experience to your character but it's like oh yeah nice. like everyone has to play their role now like we're playing online against like five other real people playing online. oh that's and, cool so oh so you're actually cool. playing like yeah. that mode but online i thought okay well it's both like i can go like that's just one one mode within this my career mode where it's let's you know you go to this certain arena and it's just like an online game where you can pick up games sort of yeah Yeah. so it was like really cool it's very cool and like but then (laughs) you get people where you know they're they're kind of naturally doing the thing like you know fourth graders playing soccer where everyone's kind of gathered around the ball right and like people aren't spacing and playing basketball potentially the way that they should be but uh, like yeah probably closer to and one mixtape than uh, than an actual nba game or something for sure but it's still it's like that's that's really engaging in a different like rocket league perspective like you say where it's like oh shit like i better be on you know on my game Aim to like play my role here or I'm going to look like garbage or like and certainly there's been times where like I'm too tired to play this I'm not keeping up my end of the bargain oh no yeah. I, mm-hmm. I but I don't want to quit I need to play through this but I'm not doing very well mm-hmm. you know that that happens too so you know it's got all that online aspect to it as well so it's good yeah, that's awesome to hear. And once again, you get every time you even mention that new Xbox console, you got me in the back of my brain just going, Xbox I need X, to upgrade, man. Oh, yeah. I need to upgrade because, yeah, I don't even have my Xbox One hooked up at the moment, but you need that, that thing just wasn't life. wasn't playing nice. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That qua- or quintuple quick resume. Uh-huh. Life, so. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, we can flip between that and Elden Ring and, you know, NHL 
uh, Rewind, which is the NHL 94 Rebirth or whatever, at yes. a moment's notice, I can flip it. I still need to play some of that because yeah. that was on uh, Game Pass, I think. I yeah, I need to play some of that. Yeah, it's great. It's perfect. Yeah, you kind of you kind of got me itching to play some sports games here, especially since I've been you know back home. Like I feel like I could talk my brother into being like, "Hey, let's let's pick oh, up the definitely. new." Uh, Madden game or not? I, maybe not I've the new heard Madden your history with terrible. that. Yeah, you could definitely do that. And the sports games, you know, a lot of them are still very good. Yes. Yeah. Or even just yeah, just getting together for Mario Kart or any of the Mario oh, sports yeah. games. Like I would be, I'd be down for that. Maybe who knows? Maybe I'll end up getting some life out of Mario Golf after all. <laughs> let's so. not get crazy. <laughs> Give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's not crazy. get overboard here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I think we can probably uh, wrap things up here for the uh, video games chat this week. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's definitely late on my end after midnight. For uh, speaking of Blink One Eighty Two earlier, after midnight. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I think zones, we can. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it feels good. Feels good to be back in Michigan. Although I definitely miss uh, living right across the street from John. Yeah. Um, but yeah, feels good uh, to get one in the can from uh, spread across the country here. But yeah, we'll wrap <laughs> things up there. Uh, and as always, you can find us on the internet at pursuingpixels.com and pretty much everywhere else that you can imagine. And uh, otherwise, we will catch you next week. And until then, take care. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Nine stages. There are nine stages. <laughs> okay, nice, Rocky nice. Re-shrined. I was I was thinking for some reason after Streets of Rage and Turtles, I was kind of thinking I think there's like twelve or thirteen, man. No, there's nine. Um, what a game, man! I'm really I gotta yeah. finish that game. Yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah, I recommend it. I'm impressed that you beat it because it is not easy, man. It is I not. But I'm like, because no, I'm gonna push my ass this, son of a bitch. Yeah, like I was, I was streaming and I was like, my back was starting to hurt, so I, yeah. did, I stopped because of that too. But I definitely was like, man, I was hitting a wall. On oh, that it, yeah, and that wall happens pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, even on the first stage, I was getting my yeah. ass handed to me pretty good. I like know that first like kind of big Brutus character that you come up against. That's like at the wall or that like gate. Yeah. Um. That like Paul Bunyan character or whatever. And there's some bullshitty parts, but no, it's it's, yeah. it's worth pushing through. And it, it, it's good. Like once you understand the language of the gameplay, you can push yeah. through. Yeah, I'm very through. glad, very glad that I pre-ordered that. And even more glad that I pre-ordered, uh, I don't know when they're coming, but I think soon. But I, I did crack and get Demon Throttle and that Hell Turtles. Yeah. Uh, oh, I did too. I Tur- bought both I think of Turtles- those Turtles games physically because I'm like licensed game. I know both of yeah. these are good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? I didn't. I only picked up the uh, Shredder, uh, the new one. But I yeah. think I should get that Cowabunga collection because I didn't even think about that with the license stuff. License like, game, man. Like Scott Pilgrim, that game was literally gone for like ten mm-hmm. years or whatever. Mm-hmm. God, yeah. So I mean, yeah. It's, I guess they're potentially bound to come back, but yeah, don't take any chances with that stuff. So worst case scenario, yeah. you will get your money back with the value of that game. Like, yeah, that's just how that equation works. Yeah, part of me was like, oh, I own all most of the other Cowabunga collection games. I don't. Me need too. It. But yeah, it's like, yeah, and I don't. And it would be cool to have like the Game Boy and Game Gear stuff mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's a Game Gear one, but I know there were a couple of handhelds. There are definitely a couple of Game Boy ones, that's for sure. Yeah, I know I owned one of them. I don't know if I still have that one. It's not a great. It feels more like the NES Turtles game, but the, yeah. the first one. But yeah, it's a little better than that. I feel. Yeah.